going on, everybody? Happy what Tuesday? Tuesday. Mon- Tuesday night? Wednesday morning? I don't know. Welcome to another episode of the Vile Files. I am your host, Nick, and I am joined by both uh, my guests for this episode and the trusty team of Allie and Amanda. Ladies, welcome. It's your first time on camera. It's a big day. It's a big day. We, uh, it's, it's Thanksgiving week. It's holiday week. As, as you know, uh, many people are traveling. And I thought, you know, instead of dragging a guest in here while they're uh, probably planning for turkey, let's just have Allie and Amanda take over the recap He was like, I couldn't get roles. anyone else. So here <laughs> My we are. literal <laughs> last choice. <laughs> Natalie's out of town, so here we go. <laughs> It, it wasn't quite like that at all. Actually, I uh, I reached. I was feeling late. It's the holidays. So sure. I was just like, who do we have? And like, you know, we have a nice rotation. And I always, you know, sometimes. And I was just like, you know what? Let's just, yeah. let's just ask Allie and Amanda. I don't want to bug anyone. They can't say no. Oh, you guys are going to be here anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are playing hard to get. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. We're going to bargain, actually. Yeah. How much are you paying? It's my first time seeing you both. With makeup on. Looking decent, yeah. I thought, well, I always thought you you both looked wonderful. (laughs) No, because you know how bad I typically look when you noticed on my birthday that I was wearing makeup and that was the, like, clue that something was going on in my life because you were like, something different is going on here. Well, again, I I always thought uh, you guys looked wonderful. Thank you. Stepping it up on camera. Well, now I think we're going to have a camera on both of you going forward. Oh, God. So great. That adds great. so much time to our morning routine. <laughs> yeah. Now I have uh, 25 seconds of putting foundation under my eyes. And then I, I, Paul, I did not realize what I was asking. It's okay. When, anyway, we'll get through it. <laughs> um, before we get in to uh, today's episode, big episode tomorrow with the bachelorette herself michelle young uh we sit down we chat we talk about uh her men why the fuck colton clayton whatever his name is is the bachelor (laughs) about martin and his his terribleness and uh in life i think we get to know michelle a lot more the person not the bachelorette totally but uh be sure to tune into that while you are traveling home for the holidays also, we are having a, a Black Friday merch sale, uh, and I'm wearing one of the t-shirts. Having fun, just an introvert. It's our introvert line. So if uh, you find yourself, uh, you have a friend who's more of a quiet person in public settings, and people are used to telling him to smile, <laughs> and why are they having fun? Or you Is know, that your introvert voice like in that. your head when you're in the corner at a party? Like, no, it's my, nobody knows that I'm it's, actually. It's, <laughs> it's my extrovert uh, impression you know, of, of an introvert. Why aren't you like, like, why aren't you dancing? Come on, have some fun. <laughs> anyway, um, 25, all extroverts are from the valley. It's a rule. <laughs> yeah, twenty five percent off. Yeah, twenty five percent. Vilefiles.com code V I A L L. Give the gift of of being seen to your introverted and friends. Cute while you do it, and uh, they're soft t-shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts. Yeah. Very soft material. We upgraded. We upgraded our line. We upgraded a few our months, line months ago. They're really great. So check us out. I mean, truly, I don't think your introverted friends will could be happier. With... They don't want anything else this holiday season. Although, like, do we? You know how we had talked about the gift where it's just like a passive aggressive gift? Sure. The self help books. <laughs> <laughs> and like you're still walking around and be like, I'm not an introvert. And be like, we know. Opens up the gift. You're like, nah. And you're like, here, maybe. Mm, I hate to break it to you, but. I don't think. I feel like. Uh, I feel like. Uh, I feel like introverts are self aware. It's one of the but they're becoming good more. qualities, you know? Yeah. Something they have to own um anyway so check it out uh, vilefiles.com 25 percent off starting on thanksgiving um code v-i-a-l-l and uh, i guess let's get to all things bachelor ret bachelor ret or should we start with bachelor nation because i feel like it's been popping lately last week was a big week obviously like this week we got the official announcement from Tasha and zach but there was like separation R. I. rumors. R.I.P. Yeah, yeah, but that was starting back on like Friday because someone 
submitted like this kind of anonymous tip of, she was like, my roommate actually ran the New York marathon Mm -hmm. next to them. Like they were like somewhat keeping pace. And she was saying like, Tasha kept wanting to walk. And Zach was like, we're not walking. We're still running. And like, it seemed like really tense. And this person like submitted and she was like, it didn't seem like it was like in a nurturing, like coaching way. It seemed really harsh. And then the past few episodes of Tasha's podcast, she wasn't wearing her ring, which was weird because the last time she didn't wear a ring, there was so much like paranoia around it. That there she was went, another time she wasn't wearing. Yeah, but she released a statement because there was so much like this was way back when she's like, it's getting resized, like everything's fine. But she didn't release a statement as to why this time. Um, and when she was on Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen, he was like asking about the wedding. Mm-hmm. She was like, no, haven't started planning. Don't, you know, no plans. And then we saw what happened. Also, unfortunate. She, she liked this post on Instagram. Uh huh. That it was just a quote. And it said, finally, I realized that I was never asking for too much. I was just asking the wrong person. She liked that post on Instagram. Ouch. Yeah. God. So that's R.I.P. Tasha and Zach. It's always subjective, though. Yeah. Yeah. Those like cryptic, vague messages. Well, I well, I don't think that was an accident. Totally. Does uh, she I, like that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was definitely on purpose. That's a bummer. I feel I feel for them. But I just think uh you know, what you're asking for. Yeah. I mean, and I guess in a way, sure. If that's how she feels, I think we always have to be careful to be like, the other person must suck. You know, like, again, it could be like a love language thing, you know, like what one person's expectation of how much they give. We like, we talked to Dr. Diane about that in terms of like, there's not the same page. They met on the bachelorette. I feel like people are really prone to like, take an incompatibility and make it into like villainize someone yeah. when it's like, it's not that they're bad. It's just that you're incompatible. Yeah, we also, and that sucks to we also that. have a tendency of doing that in the relationship. Totally. You know, in terms of, again, it wasn't an accident that she liked that post. Yes. Um, also like, yeah, I mean, who knows when, like what the rumor of, of Zach and the, it doesn't seem like a coach. I, I, I take the, the, the T from, ongoers and observers with well, a there's also salt, like but. to play devil's advocate with the whole marathon thing like what if going into this training, marathon like clearly yeah. everyone like together. there is like, like crabby yeah <laughs> I'm gonna, like, if i'm running a marathon like, you know i have a blister yeah you know? <laughs> but also like what if that was like part of their agreement she was like no matter how many times i tell you to walk you have to tell me to keep running yeah like, that was their like deal she was just like no i really want i have this She's goal like, push yeah it pushed me She's like, like i, I re- have to be faster than peter <laughs> <laughs> and zach's like okay like i guess you know yeah uh i don't think that the marathon was no. like they might have already been on the rocks and it was just that's for sure tough. for <laughs> sure running a marathon with in any conditions are is tough i mean i heard about trouble in paradise long ago but it, and and their defense it's it's a hard Hard transition. It's all, it's, there's trouble in paradise always from the beginning because you're you're always kind of like finding out what you signed up for in that relationship after you get engaged. Totally. Speaking yeah. of paradise. What? Greg. What about him? There are rumors that he had dinner with some BIP producers and they were talking about getting him on the show. Where? In New York, I believe. Someone oh. like sat next to them and overheard them talking about like how they want him on the show. Yeah, it's possible. Sure. I would suspect the producers would want him on the show. I feel like that whole group could be fun. Like the Andrew, Justin, Greg. They have like a good... It's like you remember when Greg was just the like the sad boy who would look out <laughs> dramatically? Like before, obviously before... Oh, his his, isn't he still? Yeah, in a way. I feel like he's so much more than that now. He's gotten wrapped up in... But like, I, I never forget that he's a man with just like haunting looks in his eyes. I name? would be shocked if Justin... Andrew and Greg aren't all on the beach next paradise. That could be fun. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't call I feel like that they like would break. forget to invite Justin. <laughs> you know, like the producers would like forget to email him. Not after those looks into the camera. Yeah, I think no, he's a shoe in for sure. Also, he's like someone that women will be asking for, like as a heartthrob. You don't know? You're. I don't, Why are you looking at I, me? No, I have You made the face. I no, I don't. I don't think he's like not a heartthrob. I just don't necessarily. He wasn't a standout heartthrob for me. Andrew's standout heartthrob, in my opinion. Either way, I suspect all three of them would be, be will be given the opportunity. Totally. If we had to go um, through the whole Aaron and James thing, I think we deserve those three. 
I will say yesterday was day 11 of Katie's 12 Days of Messy, which is where she's posting stories of the people on her season and assigning them a... Is that weird? Are a we, Taylor Swift song. What do we think about that? It feels unnecessary. Feels like she's trying to stir the pot this many months later. Is that what... Well, I, I empathize with the fact that like everyone who comes off the show is just trying to figure out like their lane from a social media standpoint. Totally. You know, I get hopping on the Taylor Swift hype. That makes sense. Sure. You know, we, we, we did, did that. it too. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but it seems a bit weird and it, to it make it about feels harsh. Well, to make it Putting, about your bachelor, yeah. the, the men you quote unquote dated like six minutes after you broke off an engagement. Yeah. And then assigning Blake, like we are never, ever getting back together. Like it just feels it's like harsh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay. <laughs> She's really leaning into it. Yeah. You know, like I feel like she maybe heard some blowback from the way she handled herself on AFR. And she was like, oh, okay. So people are talking a lot about the way I was kind of laying into Greg. I'm going to lay into all the other dudes too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Instead of like being like, oh, they want to see. But I, you know what? It's like at a certain point, like I feel like Katie's going, she knows that she doesn't have mass appeal. And so she's like, I'm just going to give my you followers. Think she knows that? I think I wouldn't say like she, I don't know that she would put it that way, but I think she would maybe <laughs> phrase it as like, a, like sh she has people, you either love her or you hate her. Take it or leave it, you know? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't think anybody would be like, I don't have mass appeal. Like That's yeah. a tough thing to say about yourself. <laughs> well, would you, you, you Would you say you have mass appeal? Uh, depends on how you qualify. I, I'm not loved by all. Sure. Yeah. yeah, would you rather be polarizing and have people who like really, really love you or really hate you or like kind of lukewarm for everyone? Well, I mean, if we're talking about, I mean, at the end of the day, what you really want is people to care mm. and have an opinion about you, I guess, in, in that context. And I, you know, I don't know. It's, but yeah, it's so, it's so weird. It's, it's a, so it's a weird thing to go back to and make it seem like you care. I mean, whatever. I don't know. 12 days of messy. 12 days of messy. <laughs> I, well, the first time you said that, I was like, I didn't know Katie was a soccer fan. Like, I was like, what is she doing talking about? I, that no, reference nobody else knows Messi, soccer. the soccer player? Oh. <laughs> God, oh. Jesus. <laughs> you um, really thought that that's what she was talking about? Yeah, I was, well, I was like, what? Like, that was where my mind went immediately. 12 days of Messi, that honestly, I feel like Messi should look into that. It has a ring well, to it. Well, isn't like Hannah's book about like... How, God bless this mess. Like, what is this whole like, I guess I'm... Um, it, it's so much mess happening at the same time. Totally. I feel like that's such a thing for very put together people to be like, I'm such a mess. <laughs> well, I think Caitlin kind of own that space totally brilliantly she, without having authentic without having to like say it to doubt without having to name it it's like oh god i'm such a mess yeah well, like, she wasn't like it's like when girls are like i'm so quirky it's like the first rule of being right? a quirky girl don't, don't self-label as a right? quirky girl and, and like, caitlin for caitlin sure caitlin has gone around and being like this is who i am and and uh, i think a lot of women have responded to who Kate, they, they totally. see themselves in Caitlyn because she shows it's like show don't she tell just, she, like they say in English yeah, class she just does it <laughs> yeah she just she pounds the wine on a weeknight and they got she's Hannah, like walking like Katie the walk taking notes being like oh my god I guess yeah. just like <laughs> I, don't, I don't know Rum Haven, that's right, made with real coconut water. It doesn't matter if uh, the seasons are changing and it's getting cold outside, you can still have a tropical indoors, or at least the, the feel of a tropical setting, as long as you crack open a delicious Rum Haven. Perfect to drink by itself on the rocks. That's how I enjoy my Rum Haven. Super awesome when you mix it with uh, other mixers. And you can make uh, tasty drinks like the Haven on Hearth, which is a sweet pineapple club soda, Haven and Hell, spicy jalapeno chili peppers, pineapple and lime. The Cocajito Tart Lime Mint Club Soda and much more. That's right. Uh, be the, the hit at your party by just simply bringing Rum Haven. All my friends enjoy it. And everyone now is just like, hey, I'll, I'll come over as long as you supply the Rum Haven. And the next thing you know, you're the hit of the party. Discover more recipes that will help you sip into paradise at rumhaven.com. Ritual, that's right. Know what you're putting in your body. That's right. Doesn't matter whether it's multivitamins or protein. We always assume these things are made with things that are healthy for us because, well, we tend to take vitamins and protein because we're trying to be healthy, right? And supplement uh, our health. Well, that's not always the case, but 
ritual, you have the peace of mind of knowing what they are putting in their ingredients and then subsequently in your body. Their team of scientists uh, from Harvard, hello Harvard, have reimagined protein and vitamins. They have proteins for all different uh, walks of life, uh, 18 plus, pregnancy, postpartum, 50 plus. The proteins made with uh, 20 grams of pea protein plus complete amino acid profile made with essential chloroline to help uh, fill in common dietary gaps. Delicious handcrafted vanilla flavor. So not only is it good for you, it tastes great and again, made specifically for you. So get your protein on. Also, Rich will make some great multivitamins for men and for women. Again, specificity is important when you're taking vitamins for your health. All you protein lovers out there, get your Ritual on now and get that same quality that Ritual has been putting in their vitamins in your protein. It's delicious. It's good for you. And it's available now to make trying something new less scary. Ritual offers a money back guarantee if you're not 100% in love. Plus, my listeners get 10% off during your first three months. Just visit Ritual.com to add essential protein today. That's Ritual.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Well, this goes along with the 12 Days of Messy because after one Miss Katie Thurston tagged one Mr. Thomas in I Knew You Were Trouble. She did. Suddenly, Becca wasn't following Katie anymore. Ooh. Hmm. But I feel like this might have been a long time coming because like if you're happily in a relationship with Thomas as Becca is and his ex won't stop talking shit about him, I wouldn't necessarily like want to be friends with her on social media either. I get it. Yeah. I'm actually like, that's, I mean, for me, that's where I, I, when, when Katie came on this podcast Mm -hmm. and as I've mentioned, she, she was incredibly harsh about Thomas. Now looking back, we now know she had really nothing to go on other than, and then we recorded that podcast literally moments after that episode aired where she showed up Thomas and it seemed like she was doubling down on her justification uh, of, of doing so. And essentially, not even essentially, she quite literally warned all of our listeners that Thomas was a bad guy. Like, yeah. not like in bachelor context, yeah. but like in like life. For future well, I think women. to be fair to Katie, I think it's like, we, like when asked about the question of like, do you think, you know, if Thomas is going to be in paradise, like, what do you think about it? So it wasn't, I, I just think it's- No, no, no. I get, yeah, I asked the question, but- But she still- I was surprised given it. her platform and the climate we're in that Katie was so cavalier with how she, what she said about Thomas, knowing that she doesn't know Thomas like- at all. Yeah. And I wonder if there's a certain degree of like Katie being like, I feel the wrath of the internet and like, it's a dog eat dog world. So like, if I'm being held to this crazy standard, I'm kind of going to like perpetuate it with other people. Which I, don't I don't know, know if that's the best I don't approach. know what her motive is, but that would be, again, like she has a lot of power with her platform right. and her words matter whether we agree if they should or not. And totally, when you suggest that a man on this show is a threat to women, but that's also, a bit cavalier. It and feels so, like she's changed her mind over time, like flip flopped. Well, that's the thing, though. Like, because so she during said during Paradise, and Becca posted a photo that like wasn't from the show. I think it was like Thomas like wiping sand off her feet. Katie commented, being like, "The way like you look at him or whatever, like love, like basically implying how happy she was for them." So yeah, then yeah, clearly yeah. she was like pro Thomas. Well, and now she's doing like, I knew you were trouble. Like, it's like, I'm like, where, well, that's the where thing. is it? I think you would think there would be some self-awareness or maybe, and again, we could all get caught up in the moment, mm-hmm. right? Sure. But you would think there would be some contrition or like, yeah, maybe I went too far. And, and so when you do your 12 days of messy, you don't go back to the well, despite it being low hanging fruit, I guess. Totally. Given the fact that you maybe went on a podcast and and went a little too hard to the paint about someone's character and then have that be, you know, people warned me about you going back to that whole narrative that he is like somehow a bad guy. It's just like, yeah, it, it's a it's a real. Uh, it's it's at best uh, very messy and sloppy and inconsiderate about like. They're talking about someone's character. Yeah, I think it's also hard because like Thomas's big offense was sort of very specific to Bachelor World. It was admitting that he has considered the Bachelor, which again, like as we've 
discussed many times is like not a crazy thing to admit. It's like, honestly, everybody's at least thought about it or they're lying. But I think it's hard because it's like in drawing conclusions from like a reality TV show, like to what extent can you say this is a trait that like carries over into the real world? You can't like at all. Sure. Yeah. Sure. (laughs) Hey. Also, like I've I've actually met Thomas a few times now through him dating Becca. He was at Ben's wedding. He was at a Halloween. He was at Ben's wedding. Yeah, well, because Becca oh, was invited. Oh, totally. Uh, and oh, cute. and uh, I met him at a Halloween party that uh, Natasha threw. Then the more I get to know Thomas, and I still don't know him that well, is that my my suspicions have been confirmed so far. Is that he's just a big nerd who looks like he should be like some sort of Adonis charming guy. Yeah. And him, like we were, I went to the bathroom at the wedding and in the lobby, him and Jared were arguing about, I don't think Star Wars or something. That's so endearing. <laughs> you know, like again, he's just, I think Thomas's biggest crime is that he is a six foot five, really attractive guy who, you know, is a little awkward. Yeah, well, I think it was also kind of what you were saying when you first met him on the group date about him like really turning on the charm. Like, I think he's like a very articulate, like smart person. And I think sometimes he. Well, I saw him try to turn way. on the charm. Yeah. I didn't find attempted, it charming. Attempted. <laughs> it re- but, you know, but I did ju- look, I did judge him for how he looked. Is this tall, attractive guy? He walks in the room, you notice the guy, you know? And so you. Yeah, I think we, me, we all prejudged him by his attractiveness and assumed that he should, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. (laughs) With being 6'5 comes. (laughs) So yeah, if I'm Becca and like she's doing this 12 days of messy and then she is low key. If you're Thomas, you know what I'm saying? Like you all, we all, we always hear all the shit talked about each, each of us. And it'd be, you know, after Katie came on this podcast, Thomas DM'd me, you know, you could tell he was bothered by it. Right. And it's just, you know, um, and then like, you think it goes away, right? Maybe he's like, she's like pretending to be supportive. And then all of a sudden she's like, people warned me about you. It's just like, you know, most people don't care and they move on. But if you're Thomas, you're probably, and rightfully so, extra sensitive about that. And then I back back, I was like, fuck this chick. You know? Yeah. Yeah, because it's so different for like someone talking shit about you. I think it's like much easier to be like, I need to take the high road versus like someone talking shit about someone you care about. It's like, no, get away. Absolutely not. Yeah, there just seems to be a lack of like w- Katie thinking about how people are going to, what's this going to say about these guys that she, even if she's joking, you know? I mean, she went on national television and missed defined gaslighting. And now she's just out there and whether they misdefine it or not, we all know that people are going to uh, watch her 12 Days of Messy and read into it and, and make judgments about certain people. I think it's hard because I think her whole, again, the whole thing that she's going for is just being this very like candid, honest person. And so while that has some benefits, it's like this like kind of like, I'm just going to kind of say whatever's on my mind and just like speak is like not as in certain settings does not translate well. And I think we've seen that. Yeah, well, I guess Becca and Katie won't be friends. Some of the some of the guys from her season, I I want to say it was like an Instagram live, and I'm pretty sure it was Andrew, Greg, Justin, and Mike P. Mm. And Andrew at one point was like, Mike, like, what do you think about Twelve Days of Messy? Mike had no idea that they were going on, what they were, and I was like, that's the most Mike P. thing yeah. I've ever experienced. What did the rest of the guys say? Well, Andrew just start, like started dying laughing about the fact that Mike. Didn't know what it was. I just saw a short clip, but I was like, little Mike, protect Mike at all costs. <laughs> and her last one, she's not naming what is... She's making it a two-dayer. So unless she's up... Uh, yesterday, day 11, wasn't there wasn't a name. And she said it would be like completed today. Do you think she started it thinking it was like some amazing idea and then like a quarter of the way through, like mixed reviews. And now she's just like, I can't quit. Fuck, I have eight more <laughs> she's left. She's literally done a whole video. She's like, people keep messaging me about what the name is. Like she, she loves it. <laughs> she oh, loves she, it. She, you know, I think she's happy. And yeah, like, while I think it's fair to criticize, I, I feel like she's, she's sticking to her guns and she's doing what she wants to do at the end of the day. And 
God bless Gotta respect it on some level. Yeah, okay. God, God bless that God mess. God bless both hers and Hannah Brown's mess. Let's see what else <laughs> comes out in this book other than oh, the Peter hookup. Yeah, so yeah, she hooked up with Peter. Yeah. At, but that was after... So apparently, Peter broke up with Hannah Ann in like January. Hannah and Dylan had their engagement party in February. All the producers at that point, Peter's season was still airing. They were like, don't go to this engagement party, obviously, because like he was single at that point and it would have kind of ruined the ending of his season. He goes to the party, sees Hannah Brown. Apparently they hook up. Then in March, he like on like March 10th, he tried to get back with Maddie. That lasts until like March 12th. And then Kelly appeared. So God bless his mess, honestly. Peter just calls that life. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I don't know. What's the problem? Yeah. I, I will say the, the what are you, whatever you think about Peter, he is just kind of whatever, just man. Pull, like girls left and right. Is that his vibe? That shocks me. What do you but, mean? I don't know. He just doesn't seem like that. I don't know him all that well. Oh. I think he's, he just kind of just like. He's just like, hey. He's like a kind of, like, whatever, man. He doesn't have a care in the world. It's like, I almost, I don't know. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But, but what's, because when it first came out, it was implied that maybe there was some. Overlap. Overlap. Mm. But if there wasn't. So if there wasn't Not an overlap, then what like, whatever. Hannah was just like a layover in between his flight from what's her Hannah name? Ann to Maddie. Hannah Ann to Maddie. And it was a like Hannah Brown layover. I would love to know what Barb thinks about this whole thing. <laughs> his mom. So wait, did did Peter did Hannah go to Barb's house? Huh? Well, Peter lived with his parents in LA. Oh, after the engagement party? But then they said they went to Peter's, which is Barb's. Imagine oh waking up God. wearing Peter's like shirt or some shit and going to the bathroom and you run into Barb in her robe. Oh my God. <laughs> That's what I want to know about. I want Barb to write a book. That's a book I'll actually buy. All right, let's get into uh, The Bachelorette. Yeah. Let's do it. Uh, so wait, we, we start with... We're down to eight. Down to eight. Kids come in. Kids. Children. Oh Cl my God. Clayton's big... Clayton's big oh, moment. Oh, come on. This was not Clayton's big. That was the weirdest. Ugh. So yeah, the uh, the show wants us to this whole like, I don't know why they do that. Like, is it, we're supposed to, like, do you think the producers want us to believe that Michelle's kids planned the week? It wasn't, there wasn't like a wink, wink, nod, nod that like, oh, the kids planned the dates. It was um, more, no, the kids planned the dates. Yeah. Very earnest. Very earnest, which... I guess. Well, I think it's so funny because I think Michelle is someone who like obviously all the men respect so much that you could almost see they were like any student of Michelle must be very yeah. good. They were yeah. all like very respectful of the children, Straight which the I really level. appreciated. Yeah. Yeah. And then you meet Luke and you're like, Luke is objective. Oh my God, I understand five why. years younger than the rest of them. He's like half as tall. He Some doesn't, of them didn't seem all like fifth graders. No, yeah. Luke no. especially. Just different growth spurts. Luke though. is like. You're kind of in that. Uh, there's a range. Yeah. I a real love range. Luke, but there's no way that child is in fifth grade. I don't think. Are you kidding? He was whipping out kind, patient, nice. Those were like his three buzzwords. That's how he described Michelle. It's how he described what he wants his wife to look like. He's got some good adjectives. Clayton has big muscles for carrying the groceries. That's what he said. That was a good asset. Once again, Clayton has... We can get it. Well, you, I'm just shocked that the, the batch ABC or the producers are... Like we, we see it. They just want us to know. It's Even the so kids. They're just obvious. like telling the kids the same muscles. I don't just like. Right. Kelsey, props to Kelsey, who. Called out Martin's out bullshit. Martin. It's just me and Kelsey. Off the bat, we yeah. knew. Well, it, Martin, who, who turns to a fifth grader and goes, I've had a lot of intimate and romantic experiences with your teacher. Like, Martin, ew. Martin's, <laughs> the guy, Martin's the guy who talks to kids like an adult. He's like. And I uh, have a VIP booth if you want a comp bottle. <laughs> Feel God. free to bring your, your friends. I think the thing that this part of the episode showed me is that kids can say any two facts or like basic observations and it is so hard hitting. Like Kelsey was like, Martin's trying to show off and he wears too much cologne and it's like, boom, roasted Kelsey. <laughs> like something about those two like sentence just saying those two are very simple observations together and you're like, God damn, she got him. <laughs> I wish she would have just said boom, roasted. <laughs> Boom. Roasted. <laughs> anyway, so the kids are, are planning the dates. Big, big reveal. They select. I mean, do you think this is all about the, the show trying to sell Clayton to us? That it was the, not only is Michelle happy that 
Clayton is selected for this one on one, but it's the kids who, you know, sense like a a wonderful human. I, don't I mean, know. the show sold me on Jaylene because I think she is coming for Tasha and Caitlin's job. Did you see her drop that date card and go, "Good luck"? Like she like just kind of shrugged her shoulders to this entire group of adults, and she's like, "Good luck, boys!" Like she watches this show. Yeah, she I nailed mean, it. Tasha and Caitlin might be. Out of a job. <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't see them until like the rose ceremony this I week. I forgot who they it's were. It's like we forget that there's hosts sometimes. <laughs> they do not show. Well, Jaylene has shown Jaylene that, I guess. Handled Jaylene it. shined. Even a shown. fifth grader can do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but like, to kind of what you were saying about Clayton, it's like interesting because it's like, had they chosen that he would be the bachelor before this moment? Because it's like, based off what? Even yeah. after the date, based off what? Have we ever had a... Well, you know, again, since the show started casting previous people, I mean, I'm almost, I wish, I wish that we didn't, it wasn't leaked that Clayton was The Bachelor because I think the reaction either way is going to be a resounding, huh? Sure. And I really, I feel bad because Clayton seems like a nice guy. This is not like an indication of like, we don't like Clayton. It's no, like, it, he seems lovely. seems like a lovely guy. But like, it just, it just doesn't make sense. It's kind of like what you're saying, where it's like, he's like the bachelor pick 10 years ago. Like, oh, this guy who's been single for a really long time and doesn't know if he can open up again. Like, but even then there wasn't a compelling story. Usually also like, let's right. just look at the optics. I mean, this is the, this is the first season ever in the history of The Bachelor well, if they have an, a top four that is all people of color. Totally. And yet. And yet. <laughs> and yet our bachelor. Is like. A mysterious and, and, white guy. <laughs> and, and mysterious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like there's nothing. I mean, it's just of. really bad. You know, you go through this whole like having more diversity. You have uh, Michelle, a person of color as your bachelorette. You have your first bachelor, uh, Matt James. Uh, you also have conversations on the show. Like you have like Tasha and Ivan talking about BLM. You have Michelle t- like sharing a lot of like very personal experiences about moving through the world as a woman of color. Even on Bachelor in Paradise, so we're it's having like, those conversations. Right. And so yeah. it's like not only in optics, it's also like in content. And then... And then, and then you typically pull, not always, but typically pull from your final four. Again, not always. They didn't with Katie. They didn't with Hannah Brown. But with Katie, Katie shined. Got Katie got ton of airtime. She had a strong fan base. Totally. Hannah Brown was a little bit more of a surprise, but certainly you saw the personality. Exactly. She had the same like messy quality we we're talking about. Like yeah. the Caitlyn, the Katie's. And yeah. with, with Clayton, it's just hmm. it's like the there's n- we never saw him like at all. Even we on always one on one. I don't feel like I saw him barely at all. It we was just like a saw lot him of plati- smile. A lot of platitudes. Everything he said was very like tied up with a bow. Good statement. Like could run for office. But I was like, what is beneath the surface here, Clayton? Yeah, it's like I will say the one moment where I was like, okay, Clayton, was when he was dancing. He was dancing like a little freak, and I loved it. Did you see him dancing at the museum? The like, maiden what call. He was doing the like, little maiden call. <laughs> he like went for it. He was like. Yeah. Doing his thing. <laughs> Great. I mean, I, again, it's just like, it's just, I'm really curious what, if people are going to, I'm sure some people will, but like just a really bad look to cast Clayton knowing that he gave us nothing. He's been outshined by virtually everybody. Everyone. Totally. Uh, you have your first all person. Non-white. Of, not all, your first non-white, all final non-white four. final four. Of four, incredibly charismatic and charming. Oh my God. Uh, all four characters I'm personally invested in and individually want to find love. I mean, like Rodney. Oh my God. What oh, did, my, oh my God. God. And I think you could tell that because the Brandon? episode started out with Rodney being like, I can only imagine how Michelle's feeling right now. This must be really hard for her. Like he is consistently so funny and easygoing while also being so substantive. Like, and he has a great smile. Like Rodney would be a spectacular bachelor. And then Clayton somewhere in his conversation with Michelle was essentially like, yeah, I wasn't really even dating. 
Well, he said he was like, I over the last five years, I've just been trying to impress people and make them think I was good enough. Now I'm able Classic. to like stop worrying and comparing myself to others. But yeah, he like implied he has been single for five years and he's just, he's like, I like pursued an MBA because I thought that would make me happy. But now I'm realizing like, I basically have to pull someone into my life to make me happy. It's not going to be an MBA. <laughs> I thought he said NBA. And I was like, I was like, last ditch effort. He I was like, basketball. even though he played football, I was like, <laughs> last ditch effort to like try and get Michelle where he's going to be like, and I considered playing in the NBA. Uh, uh, am I Joe? Am I Joe? <laughs> Maybe. I, yeah, it's just a... Also, I just, I just don't know, like, people are invested in him Well, at all. even, like, I flagged, they were doing, like, the butterfly question things, and she, Michelle was like, I give, and I give, and I give, and, like, that's something I'm proud of, but it can also be my downfall. Like, she was trying to kind of open that door, and instead of, like, providing his own example or saying, like, something about him, he's like, the world needs more people like that, and I hope to be that way as well. And that's why I, I admire you the most. And uh, I want to pick up from you. And uh, I'm experiencing so much growth because of that. And Michelle yeah, just goes. Very platitude. She's very like, basic. Oh. Like Michelle literally was like, oh, like she had no interest. Yeah. I will say like, even I agree that like Clayton is speaking in platitudes. And like, again, had we not been watching this only through the lens of like being like, why is he the bachelor? Like, please earn it in some way, shape or capacity, sir. Like, I will say he does. It does at least come across as genuine with him. Like, I don't think he's being dishonest. Oh, he seems or, like a nice guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But interestingly enough, if we didn't know he was the bachelor. I think we would have watched it totally. Yeah. It would have been, you know how when we watch this show and we get to like this week of the season where it's like the final six and all of a sudden you're like, who the fuck's that guy? That's what we would be saying about Clayton. <laughs> totally. Mm hmm yeah. You'd be like, oh, who's the big guy who's like, you wouldn't know his yeah, name. He smiles. He smiles. Football, like, the ultimate Viking. 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 Yeah. We wouldn't know. We would pay no attention to him. Right. But we've been honed in on him. Because we know he's the bachelor. Totally. Yeah. We're more critical now. Then somehow, you know, Brandon, not good enough. Rodney, Nate, Joe, you know, whoever Michelle doesn't end up with. And then you got Nate. I mean, charming. Oh my God. So charming. Heartthrob. Absolute heartthrob. Like you'd think women would be lined up to date Nate. But I'm starting to like, I'm starting to maybe question Nate. Not like question him. I think before I was just so, so charmed by him. And now I'm starting to be a little bit more like, hmm. Well, Nate is, I agree with you because like, let's say, well, we know none of them are The Bachelor, your top four. And whoever Michelle doesn't end up with, I would suspect those three gentlemen would also end up on Paradise. Totally. And every time we watch Paradise, we're always looking for who is the guy, who's the Brandon, who's the Blake of this season, the heartthrob, good guy, front runner that everyone thought was super sweet and charming. That person thought, I didn't get the bachelor last time for whatever reason, but everyone loves me, so I'm going to come down and be... This is my bachelor audition. They get sloppy. They're in a bunch of DMs. They come back. They come down like there's no way. They're not going like to be loved. Like they're invincible. Invincible. And, and, and Nate, that Nate, Nate is by far... Totally. The most likely. Most likely to be that person. Absolutely. Yeah. And not because he's a bad guy. He's not Martin. Martin's, no. Martin. Martin has proven to shit. be... One of the worst mm -hmm. ones of, uh, it, I mean, his, the stuff he said was so shocking. Like right up there with Skip. For all I would argue Martin's worse than Skippy. Yeah, yes, because Martin, I, yeah, I would agree. Because, you know, for all the conversations we've had over the past year, you know, the Greg and the gaslighting conversations and the reaction to, you know, Greg being upset which I, I, I would think that most people were, the people who are critical of Greg is because they thought, they didn't believe Greg's sadness. They just thought it was some sort of act. Well, I think they also, I think there was also an argument like, like that it was misdirected, that he like took his stuff and instead of sure. like processing I mean, again, it. Again, but based off of like his, and we've all handled fights poorly. Sure. Right. But Martin... Martin very much looks like the guy, despite we are we try to suggest that maybe we shouldn't be using words like gaslighting and, and love bombing. But Martin looks like the poster child for the guy 
who is capable of being the emotional abuser that we all are like trying to identify out there. The and like guy, sniff out. The guy who's so quick to like make everything your fault. Totally. To think that you are the crazy one because you're simply trying to express your emotions. And he re- he doesn't just make an accusation. He like runs a campaign yeah. to like discredit Michelle. And especially when he, because at a time where he feels threatened or losing, you know, not because he's emotionally caught up in a crazy world and grasping at straws, trying to process straws, trying to press, process his emotion, emotions. He is being critical, criticized a little bit and immediately trying to flip the switch and, and making it, I mean, it's wild. His willingness to say what he did on national television while seemingly not all that upset seemingly not out of control of his emotions. And not that it's in any way to, it, there's no excuse of getting mad and reacting poorly, but we have all gotten mad, reacted poorly and been like, Ugh. and what comes after that yeah. is you cool off. And then you're like, I Ugh, bar- got I'm bar- mad I'm embarrassed. Yeah. and I'm embarrassed at the way I behave. And depending on how frequent that happens, certainly we can assess like whether there's a real issue there or not, or, but Martin is a guy who, he didn't seem all that mad. He seemed no. maybe a little embarrassed. Yeah, it was like not a crime of passion. Like it was very premeditated and very like careful. Yes. The way he was like, just like finding so many ling- like ways to linguistically like undermine Michelle and make it qu- like question her and like question her integrity. And the way he kept being like, he kept being like, it's a miscommunication that he's only going to attribute to Michelle. And it's like, bro, a yeah. miscommunication is between two Two people. people. And you're it was only 100% it on Michelle's fault. And also, if Michelle's involved, it's your fault. Like, literally, it's your fault. Name one other time. Like, the way he's sort of, like, making it seem like... Like, finding any excuse to, like, find, like, a crack a la All Too Well. Like, when Clayton's on his one-on-one. And he's like... Martin is like, well, if he comes back, I'm really going to question Michelle's judgment. Oh, and he said, he said he'd been questioning her decisions up until that point. And he even delivered it so rudely to the guys. He goes... <laughs> I don't know if you guys are aware. I don't know if you guys noticed, but hometowns are next week. Yeah, he's week. like, I don't know if you're paying attention. Yeah. And he's like, I've just been like questioning some of these roses that Michelle has been giving out. Um, so if Clayton doesn't come home, I won't be questioning those as much. No, I've I've like, landed on that Martin is that the, the smallest of dick energy. <laughs> he Martin. is he is soft, he is small inside. And when he feels threatened, this is how he he very passively aggressively like will criticize you and break you down. Like, yeah, if my yeah. sister was dating Martin, that would be like, I, 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 and I don't like, we were, again, we record this early. I think there'll be a hatred towards Martin, but I don't think there'll be the vitriol. Like, I don't think the people, I don't know if people will be as triggered by Martin as they have been by other people. I, I'm curious. And I think they should be. For all the triggering that goes on when we watch this show, like it's so subtle, but so like obvious how Martin handles and will break down people in his life if he feels threatened or totally, you know. Well, I think part of it is like the surprise. And it's like, I will be the first to say, I totally pegged Martin wrong incorrectly. I was like, he takes off his glasses so suave. He has a nose piercing, like wonderful. But then it was like the second he started defending Jamie to Michelle on like Martin and Michelle on their one-on-one. He's defending his friend who left. Like that's, I feel like it's been a long time coming. And I think so often when we see this like big reaction to people, it's people who it's like, it feels like a betrayal and it feels shocking versus like Martin has been like slowly slinking his way into douchebaggery up until this point on the show. And then it really came to a head. Yeah. Martin's the kind of guy who like will not go down on you unless you have showered. Like he just seems like such, and he seems like the kind of guy who like talks such a big game about like being like such a good man and such an empathetic man and a good lover. Such a good lover. And then then when you don't orgasm, it's your fault. Totally. I even wrote that down like during their group date based on what he was doing with the cows. I was like, he's not a generous lover. He doesn't even want to touch it. I love (laughs) how one of the bachelor's like signature things is like, we're going to show up someone from Miami with a country style date. (laughs) Like they did it on your season with Corinne. Did Did it bring you like flashbacks to your farm date? Can we just I mean okay, flashbacks, but it home. was like okay, Clayton goes here home, we go. Moving on to the group date. Yeah, Is that Clayton, what we're doing? Yeah, our, Bye, ba- Clayton. our bachelor goes home. Bye. Okay, moving oh, on. Oh no, wait, wait, hold on. <laughs> Should I we wanna, talk about I wanna, the letters. Yeah, we talk about the letters. Oh okay, my like, god, he, was he crying? Because it looked like he was told to cry. 
Uh-huh. Because clearly, obviously, the whole letter was, I think we might make him our bachelor. From a production standpoint, was this filmed the morning after? Or was this filmed like a I'm, month ago? There's a, there's a strong possibility that letter from the kids was filmed months after. That's what I was wondering. Totally. Like at, like. They pull Kelsey out of class again. They're like, hey, sweetie, remember the Fort Man? <laughs> Write him a letter. And that also points to Luke being five years younger than everyone else because Kelsey has this beautiful, tiny handwriting. And it's like, dear Clinton, Who wrote the letter? Blah, blah. Kelsey had one and Luke had the other. And you open up Luke's and it's like, you are a good man. XOXO Luke. To be fair, <laughs> Kelsey was rocking with lined paper. Luke was going yeah. blank page, Luke, freehanding yeah. it. Yeah, I, yeah. Let's not, let's not pick on the kids here. <laughs> yeah. um, Allie is like, that is not fifth grade level handwriting to me. Not. Where's the cursive? <laughs> It's not. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't one to talk in at a fifth grade level. But yes, there is a... We know that they were strongly interested in Michael. We know that they were interested in Greg. Uh, also, by the way, they passed on Andrew. The producers felt that somehow Clayton was more suitable Would for be the be a better face of the franchise. Yeah. Whatever. I don't know. Yeah. But yes, strong pot. So when they were filming this, they, I think, were very much... I think Clayton left after they decided he was the bachelor. And this moment was very much because they decided he was going to be the bachelor. Right. It felt like a hard sell. Well, I don't know for sure at all. There's a strong possibility that Clayton reading these letters from the kids happened months. In the middle of filming his season. (laughs) They already had the cameras rolling. They're like, hey, you know what we would, can do would, here? Which would be like why he he kept sniffing. He would, and then he would wipe right below his eyes. Yep. And I wasn't seeing anything. And then maybe for one shot, I saw a little bit of gloss in the eye. Yeah. He was definitely, at first, he was definitely We've made crying. a TikTok of Nick, quote unquote, crying. We just threw water from the sink on his face. They could, there's some tricks. I mean, there the is, trade. there is Visine floating around Bachelor Nation. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. You heard it here first. Folks. I also just want to say. Uh, is that, I, can't, I can't be the first one to suggest that people have, like. Have are, fake cried on reality TV. <laughs> Never. <laughs> it's hard hitting. <laughs> we broke the story. I mean, and then Clayton mentioned that he's like, hasn't cl- cried in forever. I would argue that he still has yet. I agree. Cry. It's like really crying. And, and again, as, as, as sweet as these wonderful kids are, I don't know if I would, and I would cry over any like moment, like a commercial I can get teared up on if it's like a big moment. Totally. But I, if there's you know, an animal, especially. <laughs> but like, you know, I hope you go, I hope you aren't sad from a kid. I just don't know if that it's would... It's like, yeah, he makes great farts and has big muscles. <laughs> and then Clayton's cry. But I do think, I think there's something about the like, please don't be sad that like really, I think the reason he was crying is because I think he was like in that moment realizing that he was going to open You think his... those were real tears? Yeah. And I think... Knowing it... that there's a, at least 50% chance that he filmed it, let's say four weeks after he got sent home. Yes. With a woman he had almost no connection with after and about 14 minutes of conversation. Yes. Because I think he was like, I after think- which he was asked to be the bachelor. Yes. <laughs> it's like, listen, was, <laughs> it a you con- think- was it convenient timing for the tears? Yes. But I think as we saw in his limo interview, his whole thing was, he was like, it just sucks when you, you know, the classic, it sucks when you open yourself up and get hurt like this. It makes me want to close myself off again. And then I think the reason he was crying so much as like, please don't be sad is because he was realizing that he was like going to have to eventually get himself out of this and that he was going to have to try again because he really wants kids and he knows he wants this. And that I think he was like crying, like just at the sheer emotional prospects of the future and knowing that he has like a long road ahead of him. He doesn't have a long road ahead of him. He's going to find some like basic, boring Midwestern woman. And, and do down. we do we think that seeing the kids and getting the letter made him realize he wants kids so bad? Because that would almost be a red flag. He also said to Michelle after they met the kids, he was like, I couldn't remember the last time I was around kids. Did like, he say that? Yeah. As he was getting in the limo, he's like, I like was trying to remember if I was good at it. I didn't know how to hang out with them. So I built a fort. But he was good. He, he was built a that's fort. A, amazing move. He was. Amazing wa- move. Also, not entirely sure that was his idea. Sure. <laughs> sure. It might have been. Unclear. Yeah. 
I think we have a lot of questions. For yeah, Clayton. but knowing that he was selected as the Bachelor, it's fair to wonder how much help he might have gotten. And since we didn't see much of Clayton, a la personality. You know, I wonder uh, if, and you can tell me it, like how accurate this is, but like how much of it is like the way that people interface with production? Because he seems like the kind of guy who would be really polite and really considerate to like whenever he was doing like the confessionals or whatever else. Like he seems like he would be a real delight to work with. It could that be a factor as to why they chose him? Uh, sure. Yeah, but they've also again, it makes no sense. They've <laughs> casted pains in the asses before. It's a nice to have. But it's not a deal maker. But yeah, I, yeah. Oof. And then, you know, like, again, like, when I say, like, what we don't know if it was Clayton's idea. Like, when, it, like, it's a love, the, the Bachelor is a love story, right? They're, they want to have romantic moments. And sometimes you cast people who come up and say, you know, Brandon's the type of guy who is probably constantly thinking of sweet gestures to do for Michelle. You know, when I was on Andy season, you know, I, rather some people thought it was like weird, but I like I wrote that like fairy tale and drew those pictures. And it was like my idea. It was my idea to get her flowers. There are plenty of people who go on that show that are full of great ideas and they go to producers and they're asking what they can do. And there's a lot other a lot of other people who they're it's, it doesn't come naturally. It's not their vibe or they're too nervous. And sure, the producers are like, hey, man, like, have you ever what about this? And they throw my ideas and which is totally fine. You know, like you're, you're trying to make a show. Yeah. And it just seems like Clayton is someone who he's just a puppet. Yeah. He's a figurehead, you know, and they're <laughs> like, Hey, here's some pillows and blankets. Walk in there and say, let's make a fort. The big old teddy bear. Yeah. And, and that's what they're hanging their hat on. But, and I, you know, you look at someone like Brandon and when Michelle said, I know how Brandon loves. I thought that was such a like a really nice moment. And I and I knew exactly what Michelle was talking about when she said that. Right? Like, because you see this Brandon, and every moment Brandon is like, you could tell he loves hard. And maybe there's like a like, part of his useful youthfulness. He's not that young. He's like 26. He's, he's not but that the way young. he talks, I he think makes like him boy. sound younger. Yeah. Let me talk. He talks. Like he's a very romantic guy and he really, he, he talks like he loves heart. He's a passionate man. Like, I don't know that Brandon is as like, I don't know that he's super like articulate. Like, I agree that he comes off as incredibly genuine. And I think you can visibly see like, he thinks Michelle is just so out of his league and he is so goddamn lucky for every second. He what gets do you mean to be he's not to articulate? I just feel like he's like, I don't, I think of Michelle as someone who's like so thoughtful. I can like really beautifully like point out specific details and like just, find really like clever ways to describe and present a situation. And I feel like with Brandon, I feel like he was like very, very sweet, but I don't think he said anything that was like not super generic. Yeah, I agree I, with that. I, yeah, I mean, he's not like, it wasn't like with Joe when he talked about, granted, it wasn't Joe's line. He, Joe got it from someone else, but he still, it had an impression on Joe to the point where he remembered and related, which is uh, great things come from, Pain on or the other side of pain. Uh, other side of pain, yeah. right? Beautiful. Um, and so, yeah, but I, I just think at least Brendan has the p passion. But I, it's not even like big sweeping lines like that. Like I don't need line. It's it's Brandon is like really like Michelle and a da da da. Like he's not saying anything real. I don't need like sweeping gestures. I don't need these like cinematic lines. I need him to like actually speak about real things and like understand like what his life with Michelle is going to look like. He just, he has a very like youthful energy. And even when he was talking with Michelle's parents, I'm like, tell me something real. Like, tell me actually what's going on other than the Swedish fish and the kisses. Again, I just think you, so when you look at when Michelle said, I, I know how Brandon loves, I, I looked at a guy who, you know, was raised in a way where you, you, you can tell he grew up, like, this is my impression. Like, he grew up in a house where he was raised to be a provider, nurturer, caregiver, or whatever. So, and like, and a lot of guys will say that, right? But he will pride himself over like turning the video games off 
when his girlfriend's like, hey man, can we spend some time together? And he, or he He'd will like even throw plan. his Xbox out the window. Yeah. He'd be like, obviously. <laughs> you know, and he prides himself over going to the grocery store and seeing the bouquet of flowers and, and grabbing the flowers. And again, while maybe not overly deep or articulate, and again, I'm not saying he's not, but I get what you're saying. He's not necessarily dropping like, I've never heard something like that before. But he, you know, comes from a place of, of wanting to, he's thoughtful and, and he seems to at least be present when he is having these moments. And where like someone like Clayton seems like a nice guy. Yeah. But he also seems like the type of guy if we're just like, assuming like just just kind of like painting a like we if we if if Clayton if Clayton represents a certain type of guy it's like the the nice guy that you like settled down with in the midwest but he's got like passions of hunting and fishing and lifting weights and like packing his own lunch and like he'll be nice on a first couple of dates but once you settle into the relationship like his passions will be not necessarily getting flowers or you know taking you to the ballet or doing that but like He's going to be like, oh, babe, I'm going fishing, you know, like, and I could be wrong, but that's how it comes across where his. Pa and you think Brandon's passion will never die. I think passion. I think Brandon seems like a guy who grew up dreaming about loving someone in a very special way. Mm. And I. Th that's really sweet. Yeah. And, and Clayton, I don't think has thought about that at all. We don't know that. We don't. It seems Brandon might just be more open to like sharing that part of it. I feel like Brandon's a very yeah. like transparent. Something you dude. might like want from your bachelor. <laughs> yeah. I'm not agreeing that Clayton should be our bachelor. You know what you're looking for in a bachelor? Poker face. Yeah. <laughs> Generic lines. <laughs> Poker face and platitudes. Someone's like, I mean, I yeah, sure. I guess I hope I get married someday. Yeah. <laughs> like I want to be a dad. Groundbreaking. Yeah. Like, I want to be a dad. But he just realized that because he just encountered kids for the first time in five years. Yeah, I, you know. Uh, yeah, I just, I think the thing with Brandon is that like, it feels like very like puppy love and in a way that feels, uh, and I never question the authenticity like of yes. it. Like, I think it's so real. I think he feels it 500%. I think he is like burning with love for Michelle. But I kind of, it doesn't, I'm like, what comes after the puppy love? And I think part of the pro with Brandon is that he seems like the kind of person who would genuinely maintain a little glimmer of that even when he's 80. Yes. But... I don't know that that's enough to like, I don't know that he would develop kind of the other things necessary for, like, I just think, I think he would, you know how Michelle was like, I'm always kind of the one who's like coaching and I want someone who can like coach me. Like, I think Brandon would support her, but I don't know that he would coach her. Correct. Yeah, because he's drooling over her. He's like, looks up to her. I don't he, think he's she's so going to pick Brandon. Yeah. Yeah. Who do you think? Amanda I, picked Brandon when we had Michelle yeah, you, on. You did. Yeah. So. I was, I say shit to stir up the pot. I, you know, I feel like it's very important to have balance. A, yeah. Yeah. You got to yeah. have some balance. I do actually, I think after this episode, I was like, I think Rodney has a really good shot. I do. Yeah. I think Rodney. I love Rodney. Rodney is the new Justin. Justin's facial expressions are Rodney's fr like phrases. Like during the Viking date last week when someone was eating the food and he goes, is it crunchy? It's crunchy. And like at the farm, he's like, oh, Bessie, Bessie, we yeah, can't like, lose the look milk. me in the eye. Like literally, he's like the new Justin facial expressions, but what he says. I, I see, I could see Michelle picking Rodney. I love him. Because I also think with Rodney, it's like you have the same quality that you have in Brandon of like, you know that like, he just thinks the world of Michelle. And there's not a doubt in his mind that if he like got to be with Michelle, he would be the luckiest person and he would act accordingly every day. Like, I think they have that in common. And then with Rodney, I think you have just like a little bit more, like just a little bit more personality. Like I think like with Brandon, it's so, his whole personality is the puppy love. And it's really effective. He's gotten group date roses. But with Rodney, it's like, yeah, like with the cows, just in general, like he's having a good time and he has some like, you know, you can see him joke around a Their little bit more. secret handshake. He made a secret handshake with Michelle and Ahmed, the kid. He's really into his secret handshakes. Yeah, no, we love we love Rodney. Rodney shout the Bachelor. Out, shout out to Ahmed for sitting <laughs> still, down with with um I still Rodney, think it's show. asking about the nipples and asking about shaving the nipple. <laughs> and I respected the answer. Yeah, yeah. Which I think for most, yeah, it was like yeah. yes, sometimes. I have sometimes on a special occasion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you think he went into the detail with the fifth grader? Who's like, listen. The thing about nipple hair for I men, feel like he might have grow slowly. They had a very like big brother, little brother energy. Like, let me help you out, dude. 
This is what you do with your nipple hair. Rodney, I feel like is the guy who like at Thanksgiving, like comes over to the kids table and everybody like freaks out and starts like cheering. And there's like a bunch of kids hanging off of them. Like he just has a good energy. 100%. Again, what does is, what is Clayton have that Rodney doesn't? Nothing. Zero. And scene. <laughs> <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> Can we speak to someone? Can we pitch Rodney? I'm also like, I feel like they're really setting up a, j- like on the group date, the way they were showing Nate and Joe kind of going head to head. I feel like they really are kind of setting up a Nate Joe finale. Because Nate even said he was like, Joe beat me at Milk and the Cow. He beat me at the Baby Cows. There's got to be something I can beat him at. And then it was like, enter poop. Yeah, there's a little bit of that. Again, I, I think Brent, Brennan goes home next is my guess. Really? Yeah. You think Brandon goes home before Rodney? Yes. Well, okay. it's also like... For the same reasons that I think, like Amanda pointed out, I think there's a puppy love there. I think Michelle means what she says when she says, I know how Brandon loves. And I think Michelle sees that, loves that about him, but not but I for don't her. think he could challenge I her. I don't know if there's a mutual respect. I mean, there's a respect for Brandon, but I don't know if they're on the same wavelength. I think Michelle is probably self-aware enough to be flattered by Brandon, love how she makes her feel, but isn't necessarily challenged. I think Michelle maybe might feel a little bit more. She has too much power dynamic in this relationship. I mean, she's already the bachelorette, right? So there's a power dynamic there. And I think in that world, you want someone who can shine to the point where you're like, fuck, you make me feel a little, like I'm chasing you. Yeah. You know, and I think that's important for whether you're the bachelor or the bachelorette. And I think Brandon is missing that. So I think he goes home next. And then I would suspect Rodney, Rodney, even though I think he could surprise us and it wouldn't shock me, but I, I just, I don't see how I think the Nate and, and I think Nate and Joe, especially in that world, knowing having like you kind of land on your top two, it is hard in reality, even though the show always talks about the leads talk about like, I always like, I, you know, I waited and like even Tasha was like, I didn't know Zach existed until like, I don't buy any of that. Right. And I think it's natural to like be drawn to one or two people. And it's really, really hard to, unless you really fuck it up to like be, you know, like I think she, Rodney surprised her. Like, again, I, Rodney's like, Raven was for me, you know, like night one, you know, I didn't really pay too much attention to Raven. Well, but once wearing an apple, whatever, but I'm saying once, you know, I started talking to Raven, I was like, shoot, she's awesome. She's cool. I felt a mutual respect. I trusted her. I enjoyed talking to her. I felt like we were on the same level, but she just never, she just never could like I was already all in with Vanessa kind of thing, right? And I just feel like that's where Rodney is with Michelle. And I and I can't I, I do think now it's more Joe because I do think Nate, I think eventually Michelle will be like <sighs> while while sweet and wonderful and charming and great, Nate Nate has that kind of like Fuck boy energy. Yeah, exactly. Or I was going to say, I feel like it's Nate's to lose, but I think he might. Like, I think he'll lose it. Like, yes. I think it takes one slip up because I think up until this point, it's like you can kind of tell that they have this like wonderful chemistry. Well, like, Joe's Nate, a slower burn too, being more introverted and quiet. But, and, and well, Michelle will talk a, about it a little bit tomorrow. I think with the slower burn people, the introverted, the quiet, once you get them below and more one on one time, fantasy suite. I think those are the moments where she really will feel like, and then Joe White, you know, an introverted, quiet guy, like has their moments, right? right you can be that like ambivert person, which especially in a setting like The Bachelor, you you get more drawn to be quiet. You're not the first to speak or whatever. But like when you get a little more comfortable, you start showing show some personality. And then once Joe shows that, I think that will really be it for Michelle. And I think she trusts Joe. I think she and Joe have like been building trust on this trip. And, you know, she even said, like you remind uh, earlier, she said the way he's kind of quiet reminds me of my dad. So you see, it's kind of setting up that he's this like much more like substantive, like slow, like carefully built connection versus with Nate. It's like, there's just this raw chemistry, but I think it's got to be really scary to be like, what if this shatters? And like, what do I know about Nate? And how much do I feel like I can like trust him 
when he is so charming. I think it's really hard to trust charismatic people. There's also an element of, and we've praised Nate for this, how, you know, when when Jamie was doing his bullshit and Nate was so like unthreatened. Like nonchalant. Nonchalant. There's an element of like, maybe he just doesn't care all that much, you know? But he yeah. clearly cared about Joe at the at this date. Enough to like make a joke about being out. I didn't. I didn't get any like Nate's truly threatened by Joe. Where like I think they're friends. Yeah, I think we Nate, haven't seen. Nate. I think Nate and Joe quite like each other. Well, I think they both. I think there's sort of this like mutual understanding where I think both of them have felt very secure in their connection with yeah. Michelle from an early. Like they feel like they found their footing early, and so I think the two of them. That's sort of like a, like okay, we're in a similar boat. Yeah, so I, I do think, but that that energy, that not that too cool for school uh, feeling, I think as the season progresses, you're kind of like, why you're too cool for school? Um, yeah, it's like it's very like I, again, it's like I don't think it's like fake, but I do think it's like disconcerting. Like I, he hasn't, we haven't seen Nate be like truly humbled on this show. Like everything rolled, and like part of that is to his credit. Like he let all the skippy stuff just like absolutely roll off his back. No stress was like, I know Michelle's going to handle it. But I do think had we seen Nate be a little bit more shaken, he I would have a, a lot pissy more. on that date. I will say that. He well, could yeah, have been, but more because of Skip. But he didn't, yeah. he was frustrated. He was agitated, but he wasn't insecure. He wasn't threatened at any point in time. And I think I would feel a lot more secure with Nate's like good energy charisma if I'd also seen him if I'd seen the other side of him. But I feel like the part of it is that it's like, I don't know what that looks like. I don't know what an insecure Nate looks like because he's gotten, val he's got the first impression rose. He's like been very confident this whole time. And like, I think Nate's the kind of person who has like, you know, he works in sales. He's super tall. He's super good looking. He has just like really good energy. I think he's the kind of guy who things tend to go right for, which is not a knock against him, but it makes me wonder like what happens when things go wrong? Like what how do you say behave? about Thomas with great, with great power comes great yeah, responsibility. Yeah, it's like the same thing. You're too, you're too attractive, Nate. <laughs> Show me some vulnerability. Well, I and to your point, I, I think I agree with you in the sense that I, I think Nate probably is a really nice, great guy. I mean, I, who I don't know him at all, but he there hasn't been any kind of crack in the armor. And, it's like you need a crack. And I and I can see I can see cracks when people can't see cracks on this show, and I just can't see a crack. With Nate, like he just, and it doesn't mean it's not there, but he could just be not as into Michelle as Joe is. And I think eventually Michelle could, couldn't, can sense that. Totally. Right. And maybe she already does. Yeah. And I think especially like if Michelle's uh, so much of what she sh she's shared as like being like kind of her big core thing that she's working with as her insecurity is like feeling overlooked. I think like Nate is kind of the kind of guy who's never been overlooked. Like he's so charismatic and hot. And so I wonder if there's, even though now Michelle is charismatic, hot and so much more, like I wonder if there's a certain like dynamic there of being like, do you, can you relate to me in a way where Joe is like more quiet and you know, he's opened up about like more adversity. I think, yeah, I think Joe's the yin to Michelle's yang. I think they are a good balance of opposites, but also also plenty of reasons to relate to one another. Totally. Right? Like it's a nice fit where Nate, like we said, sexy, charming, they're both kind of extroverted. You know, they might step over each other in that sense. Nate might not have the ability to really dig deep, which eventually I think I think Michelle likes and needs totally. in a partner. The substance. Because you see the way, and also with Joe, it's like the little things where he's like so good with the calves. Like watching him bottle feed the calf on the group date. I was like, this is a tender man. But then you also see how like the basketball date. It's just the little things. Like in <laughs> caring for farm animals that will never happen again in our Here, relationship. <laughs> here's a wrinkle. Rodney could be top two. I, I agree. Where if I Nate think, has his I little. I think Nate could go home third. Yeah. Joe, Joe versus Rodney. Yeah. I think that's possible. That would be or like really the, the competitive. Realiz the realization of Nate being like a nice guy, but like, you know, not something that when it gets down to like engagement talk, like Michelle's just like trying to pull from Nate, trying to pull from Nate and Nate just can't but get Nate there for whatever reason. But Nate said he was into her. He was like, I'm falling for you. Like, da, da, da. like we sure. had that whole conversation. We're acting like he's not 
made his intentions clear or like his no, emotions we, we are, her clear. We're acting like when it gets down to talking about actual engagement and things move in hyperspeed, you go from like, you know, at this point of the season, the producers, you know, hometowns are going to meet your family, meet your family. They, and they're going to like the conversations around engagement and marriage are going to start being like nonstop and things will get that much more serious. And you think Joe's going to be completely fine with that? I, I just think Michelle, specifically with Nate, there's a chance that when things get really serious and he has to start talking about futures and planning and engagement, right. he'll, 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 say, short. he'll say all the right things. But Michelle won't believe him. It just and and it won't be like and it won't be like Martin or Jamie saying wrong totally. things. It'll just be and it'll come across as nice. We won't really know, but I think at the end of the day, Michelle might just be. But I feel safer and I believe Rodney more than I believe Nate. And sometimes I think, depending on if like the next bachelor is not part of the equation, I think sometimes the lead wants to send home the Nates sooner to make their final decision a little easier on themselves. Um, you know, cause like maybe like Rodney is always like that person that's been kind of surprised. Like Michelle's never really thought she's going to pick him. Totally. But every time she hangs out with Rodney, she's just like, the guy just keeps fucking showing up. He keeps yes. fucking showing up. Well, but it's he, like Justin and Katie season. Suddenly Justin was like top two. Yeah. We're like, where's he been? And so he'll never pass Joe. But to help Michelle solidify her decision for Joe over Nate, she will pick Rodney over Nate. That's interesting because I feel like if it's Nate and Joe in the final, she'd go with Joe because of the gut feeling. Of either the, way, like, knowing she I think cross. either way she's going to pick Joe. But, but I, I, could see, I yeah. could see her picking Rodney over Joe. Again, we agree. Because I think... We agree nothing would surprise... Not, that wouldn't yeah. surprise us. We acknowledge that wouldn't be the biggest upset in the history of the best rat. Totally. But we're, I'm still picking Joe. Okay. Yeah, I hear. I, I think it's just like, you see how like beautifully their lives would blend together. Yeah, it just makes a lot of sense. It just makes a lot of sense. They're so like, and you also, she was horny when Joe was playing basketball. Like <laughs> I, I- I was horny when Joe was playing basketball. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> Joe's beautiful. Joe's beautiful. And he is like- He has those quiet, piercing eyes. Oh my God. I also could wish I could wear jewelry like Nate. Yeah. That nose ring. I was looking at watching that. Really taste. And then the, the cross earring. Really yeah. Good. It's like Nate is from Austin in a big way. That's why. I, it, it, oh, oh, can we talk about Olu for a second? Yeah. In the first time, I think, in the history of the show, he, he snitched in a likable way. He snitches every episode, but it was finally worthwhile. But like, it, you're, you're never like, oh, fucking snitch. You're like, I. Really like Olu. So much integrity. Oh my God. So much integrity on Olu. Just, he, yeah. I mean, he's a little like gossipy, but it was like for a good reason this episode, but he's done that every episode. Every time someone goes on a one-on-one, -on -one, I hope they don't come back. He does it in a way that makes me feel like this is more about high character rather than about his insecurity. And maybe, was, maybe he has me fooled. And I feel like I feel like him, like the, the facade of him talking shit is more a reflection of how obedient he would be in a producer interview where they're like, so do you hope he comes back? Like, I feel like Olu would just like follow instructions and be like, I hope he doesn't come back. I don't think he's going to come back. No, I like, think he's a little sassy. He's too, no. I, I think that's a part of it, but I don't I, think he's- He's got like, me sold that his decision to snitch is more about the per he's actually being a protective, nurturing type of soul rather than selling it as protecting, but really just insecure. And you could tell when Martin was saying all the fuck shit that he was like the way you could see in Olu's eyes that he was like really upset Angry. that someone was yeah. talking about his girlfriend that way. Also, I don't think you'd accuse Olu of being insecure when he showed up knowing there's a 50-50 chance he goes home wearing that blazer. Oh my God. I don't know. That's a, that, that's a confident man. Bold. No one's saying he's insecure. Well, you, yeah. You, I said a, he was a little snitch. He's a little gossipy bitch, but I didn't say he was insecure. That, that, that would, that is an insecure person. Totally. If you're, <laughs> if you're a gossipy, snitchy little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> New that, merch. That's coming from a place of insecurity. A hundred percent. I don't know. I want to ask him some questions. 
He's got me. If I, he was secure enough, maybe he'd be uh, doing the Nate thing where it's like, oh, I'm not going to even talk about it. I'm not going to acknowledge it. I'm well, so above it. But he's not, it's not about, it's just that he he knows he's not Rochelle's, like, he he's aware of the lack of connection. Is he? Again, I, that's what I think. I don't, I could be wrong. I don't think Olu has the ability to come to paradise and be a villain. Not at all. No, I don't think so. Although I don't know that I would say I would have said Ivan had the ability to come to paradise and be a villain, you know? I don't think Ivan was. A, I did. Well, I don't think he was like necessarily a villain, but he was definitely like at the center of some drama. But and, to like, that point, I could have seen I, Ivan is very confident in himself. You could you could suggest cocky. I think we're saying this after Paradise. I feel like if we remember, like I just oh, remember when, I, when we inter- when, I, when I, you weren't you guys weren't here, but when I interviewed him, there was, there was a guy who believed in his abilities. And and for a lot of reasons, rightfully so, but that can easily come across as cocky on reality TV. Sure. So like I wasn't mind blown that we saw this hyper confident uh person who in the raw I just I don't see that from yeah. Olu. I don't know. And I guess like, oh Rick, I guess he goes home. <laughs> Rick. And like Rick. Still, we know more about Rick. Than we do. And Clayton. I'm more invested in Rick's love story. <laughs> Than, than Clayton. Clayton. <laughs> and Rick looks like he's always about to pass out. And so that's really saying something. Rick like was an extra on the Vampire Diaries back in the day. Who would you rather date? Rick or Clayton? Who would you rather hook up with? <laughs> Clayton. <laughs> I feel like I'd break Rick. <laughs> what? Like I see why he looks small and sad. <laughs> he does look a little fragile. <laughs> Emotionally fragile. No, I don't think he's physically. physically fragile. He looks a little waifish constantly looks like he's given blood. I feel like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't think either of them are guys. You don't have, it's not, you don't get a C, none of them. Yeah, this up. is not like, would you sleep with either of them? It's, it's who would you rather other. hook okay, up okay, with? Okay, okay, would you rather? Okay. Um, you're a desert island. You're like, you got two options of, of, of men. It's the only way you survive is by having sex. I don't know. Who would you rather like, go on a date with? Well, I just feel like there's a chance that Clayton's really bad in bed. Not from a not from a bad way, but just from like a just be hyper athletic. Yeah, like I feel like I like Clayton could rush the force foreplay, and like he could not. You know, I don't. I'm not saying this definitively, but I could see he doesn't read as generous, suave, suave in the moment. Well, yeah, because we haven't seen him had have any chemistry with Michelle versus like with Rick. It's like the my man God, with his head on a platter is going to be more suave. He interestingly, but him and Michelle had some chemistry. <laughs> Do you think Clayton yells out when he climaxes? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like a Viking. <laughs> He's going to wear the like the helmet thing they gave him. There's almost zero chance that Clayton comes on this podcast now. We've been a little hard on him. Sorry. <laughs> and again, Clayton, we think you're swell. We do. I it's, said it's, I would rather hook up with you, Clayton. It's, it's almost unfair because we, we, a hundred percent of the criticism that's going to come his way is not his fault. It's because he had a target on his back for being bachelor and being boring. <sighs> Love you. Love you. Kisses. Oh, one thing I noticed uh, uh, before we wrap up, what was the analogy with, what were they doing hmm. that Michelle was like, this is like love. Was it farming Turning butter. Turning yeah. butter. She was like turning. It's like she was like it takes a while and it doesn't pay off at first, but at the end you get something beautiful. And I realized that butter. when it comes to the bachelor in love, like any task, you can give a love analogy. Totally. Totally. <laughs> the like, manure. Like if the group poop. date was like riding an elevator, be like you know sometimes love it goes up and it goes down, it goes down. and like you know and sometimes you press the buttons and other times other people yeah, press the buttons. Yeah, and sometimes you just like get stuck and you have to like figure out how to you know. Go up or down. But when those doors open, you got to get out. Yeah. You got to go for it. <laughs> Even if you're not ready, you have to go. Like sometimes, you know, what if the group date was crossing the street? Yeah. Sometimes you, know? you have to right, wait for the right sign yeah, before if, proceeding. Yeah. You have to, totally. If you see a red light, stop. <laughs> red flags, red lights. <laughs> Literally anything. <laughs> Truly. You have to swerve through traffic, swerve through different. Yeah. God. Eating a sandwich. Sometimes, you know, you have to eat around the crust and, yeah. you know, some- <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it's about keeping it together. You're not sure what you're biting into. Yeah. You have to keep it together. It together. Yeah. yeah. You gotta really protect. Crazy of circumstances. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's finding the white bread 
while also savoring the pesto. <laughs> it's surely any. Anything. Anything is a metaphor. Anything. Literally anything. Although I was impressed about the churning of the butter. Yeah. Well, when you find out that Joe literally grew up on a dairy farm, like this boy knows what he's doing. Layers. What a flex that he, because I think usually it's like you have group, group dates where someone is in their element and it's very obvious. Like, you know, like they go to Viking Stadium, Clayton's the football player. Or like whenever there's, you know, the basketball date with Joe. And like, this is another one where like Joe was very clearly in his element, but he's so confident and quiet. We didn't even know that. Who was the standout on your farm date? Obviously, Corinne was out of her element. Who was in their element? Uh, Christina. Oh, yeah. Love her. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. She's hardcore. Christina really thought. Like, she Wasn't was, that whole Wisconsin, like you went to Wisconsin early because of weather or something? Like you there had was to, a hurricane. Yeah. And, and, uh, Interesting. I know, so I ran into someone. Head. I was in a bride, I was like in a bridal party. And one of the other bridesmaids was like, oh, you work for Nick Vial? I was like one of the people in Wisconsin that they like had stand at like your concert date or whatever. Like sure. you went to a that show. Was cool. yeah. yeah. And Chris she was Lane. like, she was like, we had to listen to the same song like eight times in a row so that they could get the different angles. <laughs> but nothing but good things to say about you. TV. Movie TV. magic. Have um, we, have we, should, should we talk at all about like Brandon meeting the parents? I guess we already covered it. I just wasn't sure if... <laughs> Michelle's dad was seeing if he had a boner because he clearly looked down after they Those stood up. Those were his <gasps> swim trunks, though. He was clocking the fact that Michelle had gone into his closet and given Brandon his swim trunks. It's also like, can you, at that point, like, can you really blame him? Michelle was on his lap. They were making out in a hot oh, tub. Oh, no. Like, yeah. <laughs> at that I, point. I love how the, the show, try, like, really tries to sell, like, this is all... An income for parents. Oh, my God. Pulling like, we didn't tell the them. Like, <laughs> not show up. <laughs> Yeah. I guess. Would you wear your girlfriend's, like Natalie's dad's swim trunks? Sure. I mean, now, but like at the beginning? Well, I wouldn't, more importantly, I wouldn't get all weird <laughs> and not, and refuse to wear them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's true. They were all be like, too. oh my God, ew, your dad's? Like, I wouldn't make a big production about yeah. like, I'm like, okay, I guess they're just swimsuits. What do you think he, you know what I'm that's saying? Such a the, weird battle to pick. Yeah. <laughs> It just feels like, would you wear a, your boyfriend's mom's swimsuit? Again, it's just depend, It's framing. Would I go <laughs> out of my way to do it? No. no. <laughs> if it was my only option, would I throw a fit and refuse to put them on? Yeah. Like, also no. no. <laughs> also no. That's true. I would just kind of like roll with it. Yeah. Um, but I feel like it was nice to see Michelle's parents. That was very cool. Michelle's dad. Oh my God. So kind. Michelle's mom. I'm like, that is someone you want talking to customer service on your behalf. Michelle's mom, I was like, this woman takes no prisoners in the best way possible. Like she seemed very kind, but like no BS. It's a delightful family. They, they've they raised a very impressive woman. Michelle even said that though. She was like, my dad typically doesn't have to, if my dad's ever in a position where he has to stand up for himself or like say something, my mom's always right there in front of him standing up for him. Like she said that was kind of their dynamic. And I saw But that. I also love that her, her mom mentioned how you know, it wasn't just like a platitude or something you say. She said, he's always had my back. And she mentioned like moments where like that decision like wasn't easy. Wasn't always easy. Yeah. You know, where you assume that you'd want to have, always have your wife's back. But like, let's be, there's a lot of married people out there who might not feel like their partner always has them, their back. And, you know, having her mom say that, uh, it felt real and substantive. Uh, yeah. Like there, you know, you could tell when she was saying that she was thinking of specific moments of when he like went he, to st bat he for stepped her. up and she she felt protected and safe by him and it validated their connection. And Absolutely, that was cool. It's like they wake up and choose each other every day. Michelle's parents, yeah, which we love. I also one thing, two things about that. One, I thought it was so funny when Brandon sees Michelle's senior photo and it's like your teeth are so straight. <laughs> it's like were they not before Brandon? Yeah. Like such a specific also, I, thing I thought to that point was a really out. nice senior photo. <laughs> yeah, I was like Michelle. I was like, of course Michelle looks like glowing in her senior photo. Also, really, really big. Yeah, big senior photo. Yeah. It's like that, and it was like I believe it was on a water feature. It was definitely outdoors. Oh, yeah. There was like why, high production. Why volume. are senior photos always on the stairwell? Oh, because it's like climbing the steps of life. I, walking up to the next mine chapter. Mine is in my dad's office or my parents' office. And I like to joke. It's like, they're like, that's why we pay the bills <laughs> right there. <laughs> what are you doing in your senior photo? Um, 
I am, well, it's, for, first off, it's life size. My sister and I have life size ones what? next to each other. They're big. And I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm like laying down in a windowsill and I have like nude heels on in the back that are like crisscrossed at the ankle. And I'm wearing like a this sweater. This is like in your dad's office. Yeah. My sister has one next to it and she's like hugging a tree or something. But I'm drinking Dunkin' Donuts in my senior photo. <laughs> <laughs> the hugging of a tree. Classic senior mm-hmm. photo pose. Classic. Her hand is like on it. But also like, why? why? <laughs> so bizarre. Because you need something to do with your hands. Like it feels weird to just stand there. I guess. I don't know. The other thing, I think it was interesting that Brandon asked Michelle's parents for, yeah. because that, okay. And I think that's again, part of it where I'm like, I, he is so in love with her, but I don't think Michelle is the kind of person who would really, I think on one hand, I could see her really appreciating like the respect that it showed. But I also think she's the kind of person who's like, I make choices for myself. My parents don't give me away. But, I choose. But he didn't ask for their permission. He asked for their blessing. Right. Different. Okay. But I think it's different. I think you could tell from the way the parents answered it by being like, "If she chooses, yeah." You. But that's the classic response, right? It's also they're like we. It's just also met the re- you. it's also the response of someone you probably give of like you're not worried that they will be picked. It's like whatever my daughter wants, which yeah. is not you. <laughs> totally <laughs> right. Nice one, back. But in fairness to Brendan, he didn't ask for their permission. He just said. I would love for you guys. I, it would be nice. And that's a, that's a valid want to like, I ultimately your daughter is her own woman. She make her own decision, but like it would, I would love to know that you are supportive of this. Uh, yeah. I really respect the decision. I think it was just like the way he went about phrasing it was like another time that I remember being like, he has no chill, no chill, zero, zero chill. But he's still very charming. Yeah. It's like no chill, but a lot of ice cream. Well, 100% get engaged on Paradise. Oh my, day two. Like day two of Paradise. Uh, it will be the rose ceremony. He'll be like, can I, when can I propose? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he'll give a rose and be He's like, like hey, get that on one End of the season. You got you to gotta wait. You know, so, no, I'll do it now. <laughs> I'll do it now. The second. <laughs> I'll do it right now. He's like, I have a ring on me. We'll see. Or, God, can you imagine Brandon being a Paradise villain? No. I don't, but... So sweet. Yeah, but, well, because again, it's like what, that's the big thing about Brandon. What is there without the puppy love? Like, what is his personality like when he's not like like chasing after this woman he thinks More the world of? More than Clayton. Like, and is he like, does he get complacent? Because like that's a, if he's going to like pull some stunts on Paradise, it's like how complacent will he get? Because it's like very becoming to watch him like this like lovesick boy. But like if he goes in a little bit more confident, like how is he going to behave? We'll see. We don't know. All right, ladies. Well, thank you for coming. Time flies when you're having fun. Pretty cool. <laughs> Time flies when you're telling pee-pee stories, Ali. <laughs> That's my go-to. Well, thanks for listening, guys. Uh, make sure to tune in. Well, the Michelle episode is almost certainly out already, unless you couldn't help but wait and listen to this Tuesday night. Uh, Again, uh, Black Friday merch sale. Uh, check us out. 25% off code V-I-A-L-L at vilefiles.com. Uh, we are back on Monday with a great ass Nick. Charlie Jordan next Wednesday. More Bachelor recap. Hometowns. Hometowns. Edition. Is it hometowns or is it tell all? Probably hometowns. I forget. doesn't matter. We're, we'll be here breaking it down. And other than that, have a very wonderful, happy Thanksgiving. Safe travels. And we will see you, well, whenever. We're around. (laughs) Bye. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. But before you go, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss any future videos like our Monday's Ask Nick, especially if you're looking for some relationship stories and relationship advice, as well as our Wednesday interviews with your favorite celebrities and experts. See you next time.